What what is Shatya mean? Truth. Yeah. Okay. What is Narayan? What is Narayan? False. No. No. Nar means water. And iron means the person who lives in the water. Who lives in water? Fish. Fish lives in water. Who else lives in water? Who else lives in water? <laughs> Vishnu. He lives in the water. In the, in the middle of the ocean. Okay. He lives in the water. So he's called Narayan, the one who lives in the ocean. Okay. And Narayan also means one who lives everywhere. So it says Satya, which is truth, is everywhere. It's all around us. Because truth is all around us. So my, my parents, they watch this, um, this show about God, and I'm not sure what it's called. And then there was always this person who was uh, like, Nana, Nana. Yeah, and Nana. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. There's, there's, there's Narad Muni who goes Nara and Nara. Okay? Because Narad Muni loves worshipping Nara. Okay? And Narayan is obviously his chief deity. That's the person he always goes to and worships and prays. And he's part of the story as well. So that's really important. Good, well done for remembering that. So Narayan is, is the God who lives everywhere. He's the Vishnu. He's the one who is in the entire world. The word Vishnu means the world. And Narayan is the person who lives in the entire world. Satya is everywhere. Truth is all around us. Whether we choose to see it or not is a different thing. But truth is true. Truth doesn't change. Just because I think something is different doesn't make it so. I could say that this thing is right or wrong or good or bad for me. But the fact that it is there doesn't change. For example, chocolate. Chocolate is chocolate. Okay? Whether I think chocolate is good or bad for me is up to me. If I love chocolate, chocolate is good. But if I got diabetes, then chocolate is probably not the best thing for me. But that doesn't make chocolate good or bad. Chocolate is chocolate. How I relate to it, how I see it, is my choice. But the fact is, chocolate is chocolate. Okay? Now we have to learn to view things in their real or satya form, as they are. Now, we can choose to say this is good, bad, or ugly, or we can say this is as it is. Our choice. We have to look at things as they are. A lot of times we have our own way of looking at things, our own goggles, and we see everything in that goggles. And we see everything in that format, and we don't see anything else. Okay? The world is a mirror. It reflects how we are. If I'm an angry person, then I will see angry everywhere. The person who cuts me up on the motorway is angry with me, and I'm angry with him. My boss is angry with me. My customers are angry with me. The person who is serving me is not smiling, so he must be angry on the inside. Okay? Right? So because I see anger everywhere. If I turn on the TV, I see fights, and I see war, and I see police everywhere, so everybody's angry. Everything in the world is angry. angry. And if I'm in love, then I see love everywhere, right? The person who smiles, oh, isn't it cute? Isn't it cute? You know, I see birds chirping, oh, they're lovely. Because I've got my love glasses on. <laughs> so, depending on how you feel, you're in different moods and different modes. Okay? So, we often see things as we want to see them, not as things as they are. Satya is to see things as it is and to bring satya into our lives okay. we mustn't be three four different persons inside us we can't say things differently think things differently and do things differently you might say i love you but we don't really love them we actually hate them that's being inauthentic that's being untruthful okay. so you must not do that because that makes you incomplete whatever you do you should be complete. Whatever you say, you should do. If you say to somebody, I want to wake up at 6 o'clock, you should wake up at 6 o'clock because you promised. If you said you're going to wake up at 6 o'clock but you knew in your heart of heart you're only going to wake up at 6.30, that's being inauthentic. 
That's being untruthful. untruthful. Okay? And because you knew that in your heart before you did it, you said to somebody, you're going to help them with their homework, and you don't help them, that's not right. So satya is to say, I'm going to bring satya, truth, into my life. Now I want to see satya outside of me, because if I bring satya in my life, guess what will happen? I will see satya reflected in the world around me. Okay? So whatever you are, like I said, angry or love or helpful or unhelpful or intelligent or whatever, the way you feel is how the world will reflect around you. So if you are truthful and if you are honest and if you have integrity in your life, that is how the world around you will be reflected. Okay? So that's what the whole purpose of this Katha is to say, I want to be truthful in my life. So we start with Narayan Muni, okay? because he's a favorite person in all stories. So Narayan Muni is going Narayan Narayan, and he's going to this beautiful forest where all these rishis are doing various conversations on satya and truth and power and religion and meditation and stuff. And they say to Narayan Muni, tell us something about what you know of the world and why are people so miserable? Why is everybody miserable? So Narayan said, I had the exact conversation with Narayan a few years ago and said, this is what happened. Because all Indian stories begin with that. There is always a conversation and you say, why did this happen? You say, ah, I know somebody had this conversation earlier than this and they start with a story from another story. That's how all Indian scriptures are. <laughs> so in this case, Narad Muni says, I had the exact conversation with Narayan, and this is what happened. And so the entire Katha begins. He says, once upon a time, I also wondered, why is everybody miserable? And so I went to Vishnu Bhagwan and said, Narayan, why is everybody miserable? And Narayan said, they are miserable because of their own deeds. They are miserable because they created this mess. Okay? We create the mess that we are in. We are responsible for whatever we have. If we don't home, if we don't do our homework, what happens? We get into trouble. Can you blame anybody for that? No. no but do we blame everybody for that? You blame yourself, and you don't blame anybody else. Is that true? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you blame? The dog ate my homework. <laughs> you, you you blame the pets. Who else do you blame? Pets. <laughs> Mom didn't give me enough time, or mom didn't help me, or dad didn't do the printing for me, or my brother was messing around, or guess what? Had I want ten hours on TV, how could I do homework? <laughs> we have every reason on earth for not accomplishing what we have promised, but we never blame well, ourselves. We never take responsibility for what we do. We say, so-and-so did this, so-and-so didn't teach me, so-and-so didn't work out for me, so-and-so, da-da-da-da-da-da-da. But we never look at ourselves and say, what didn't I do? Why didn't I achieve this? Because whatever. So Vishnu Bhagavan said, everybody is miserable because of their own karmas. What they did now or in the past or what they could have done and they've not done. And then they blame everybody else for it rather than themselves. He said, but there is a way out. You can't just say everybody blames everybody else and that's why they're miserable. You've got to have a solution, right? Because what's the point of having that? They said, okay, what is the solution? So Narad Muni said, Narayan, what is the solution? And guess what did, what did Narayan say? Tell the truth. Be truthful. Not tell the truth, but be truthful. Okay. If you're going to say something, do it. To yourself and to the people around you. The moment you become authentic, the moment you become honest, the moment you have integrity in your life, everything around you suddenly becomes crystal clear. Okay? Because then you know why something happened. You say, okay, this happened because X, Y, Z. So let me fix this by doing this. If you are going to skirt around the issue and not deal with the main issue, you'll never resolve it. Okay? If you say, okay, I didn't do homework because of TV. Right, get rid of TV. Tomorrow's the is right. No more TV in the house. Right. <laughs> Guess what will happen? Kids still won't do the homework because they'll find something else to occupy themselves. Okay? They're not dealing with the core issue. The issue is 
not concentrated. Yeah, that's the issue. The issue isn't TV, the issue isn't the dog, the issue isn't mom, the issue isn't your brother. The issue is you. So the moment you deal with you, everything gets sorted out. Okay? Whether it be at work, whether it be in personal life, whether it be in relationships, whether it be anywhere else. So, Vishnu Bhagavan said, look at Satya. Be Satya. And the moment you look at things as they are, and put them in your life, and start acting on it, okay, things will sort themselves out. Because you have sorted it out. Nobody else. But if you tell somebody that, that becomes very dry, right? That's just too simple. Right? This is, ah, oh, that's another lecture, right? So nobody wants to hear that. So Vishnu Bhagavan said, I'll tell you a story about that. This is what I said about Indian scriptures always having stories and stories and stories. It's like the Russian dolls, you know, there's a nested dolls within each other. Because guess what? The easiest way to understand a principle is through a story. If you tell somebody to do something, they won't necessarily do it. But if you tell them a story and say why they should do it, then they'll do it. If you tell a child, you should not talk to strangers, what will a child do? They say, who is a stranger? I don't know who is a stranger. I don't know how to define a stranger. If you tell them the story about Red Riding Hood, guess what will happen? Yeah. You know, not to talk to Mr. Fox. And Fox can be... Yeah, he, he can even dress up as Grandma, can't he? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know that the strangers, <laughs> strangers can be very sneaky. And you shouldn't talk to sneaky strangers, right? So we... Right. So instead of telling children not to talk to strangers, we tell them the story about being red riding hood. So similarly, to get a principle across, you often have to tell people a story. story. So Vishnu Bhagavan said, Narayan said, I'm going to tell you a story. story. So Vishnu said, I am telling you a story about a Brahmin that I met in a place called Kashi, which is in North India. And this Brahmin was very miserable. He was very sad and very, very poor. And he was horribly poor, and he was really, really sad. And Vishnu Bhagavan came up to him and said, why are you sad? He said, look, I live in this beautiful city called Kashi, and I have nobody that I can rely on. And nobody's nice to me. Nobody's... He just went, yeah, 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 yeah. And Vishnu Bhagavan said, okay, stop. So you had your little rant. What are you going to do about it? He said, I want to improve. Said, when do you want to improve? When should you start improving? Now. Yeah. Well done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you have to start improving now. You can't wait 10 days. You can't wait 10 years. You can't wait any minute longer than now. He said, how do I start improving? He said, first and foremost, be truthful. Be truthful to yourself. And start being satisfied with whatever you have in life. And work on it. Okay? You said you are miserable, you are poor, but how poor are you? Are you able to eat? Yes. Do you have a wife and husband? Or wife and children? <laughs> wife and children? Yes. Do you have a house? Yes. So you're not that poor then. Okay. Often we feel we are more miserable than we are because it's all in our head. In our head. Okay. We have a lot to thank for in life that we don't really even acknowledge. Okay. We should say, I'm thankful for good parents. I'm thankful for living in a country where there is no violence. I'm thankful because I have water, running water. There are lots of kids in the world who don't even have running water. And they don't have a roof over their heads. And they don't have two square meals a day. Yeah? You all know this. Yeah? So, in life, we have a lot to be thankful for. And guess what? We forget. And we never say thankful for all the good things in life. And we, what, what do we do instead? All the things that we don't think we don't have, right? We say, ah, if only I had a bigger house. Gee, you know, right. Okay? You know, if only I had, you know, three cars instead of two. But what about the two cars you already have? You know? Do you need any more cars? But a lot of the times we focus on the things that we think we want rather than the things that we need. And we often don't thank people for the things we do have. So what if like you're about to die and then you're like I wish I had a first aid kit? <laughs> <laughs> then what should you have done? <laughs> first aid kit. <laughs> 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 what if what if you got run over? 
and then he was dying, and then they just ran away. And he was like, oh, why? I wish I had a friend. Why are you thinking about that? That's not that's not being that's discussed. Not so. really <laughs> yeah. we're talking that's about. an accident. So you can't you can't you can't plan for accidents, right? You can only plan for things that are that thing you can work on, right? You can plan for what? Yeah. What what can you plan for? What can you plan for? Earthquakes. You can plan for earthquakes. What else can you plan for? Oh. Tornadoes. There's no tornadoes here, but you can plan for it. <laughs> what else can you plan for? You can plan for your homework. You can plan for your holidays. You can plan for what you're going to study in the future, not just now, like five years down the line, ten years down the line, or what you know, what sort of things do you like? You can plan for where you're going to play, yeah, or picnics and things. So you plan for things that are in your life. You can't plan for the whole world, not yet. Okay, when you're a president, you can. <laughs> so you need to you need to have an attitude of gratitude in life. Okay. A lot of us are not grateful for the things we do have. So Vishnu Bhagavan said to this Brahmin, first and foremost, be grateful for the things you do have. And tomorrow, from whatever you have, whatever you get as your, as your big shot, do a puja of Satyamara. And from that day onwards, concentrate on being truthful. And you will see an amazing transformation in your life. And the Brahmin said, Fine, I've got nothing else to lose. Yeah, I'm miserable already. I might as well do good. So he said, fine, I'll try that. And guess what? Next day, he did get more than he thought he was going to get. And what did you do with that food? No. No. He did puja. Uh, so, so from whatever food he had, from the fruits he got, he did the, the prasad. From the uh, flour and stuff he had, he made the shiro and he said, I'm going to get as many of my friends and family together and do a puja. And he got his friends and family together and did a mini puja. And he said, right, this is as much as I have. I don't need to borrow. I don't need to go over my limit. This is all I have. This is all I work with. Okay? As I said before, you can work with flowers, you can work with rice, you can work with tulsi, you can work with anything you have. If you don't have anything, just say the name of God and that's more than enough. Okay? So he did his puja and he found that day by day, the more satisfied he was with his life, the more happier he was with his life. Okay? Um, I don't know if you know this story. Many, many years ago, when Mahatma Gandhi, before he became the Mahatma, he was living in which country? He was living in South Africa. And that's where he started his whole motion of, you know, non-violence and um, civil disobedience and all of those things and peace and everything. And when he started his marches initially, um, he had very little to go on. He only had whatever food and stuff that was donated to him or whatever he could find in his house. And he had all this big march with all these people coming to gather to go from one part of South Africa to another, to Johannesburg, to protest from Transvaal to Johannesburg. And every day more and more people were joining in the march. And every day the food was getting less and less and less. So one day the guy who was cooking said, um, Kandiji, we only have this much food, we don't have enough for everything. So what do we do? He said, well, make kitchen. That's the easiest to make and that's got the least amount of fuss. So they made kitchen and said, yeah, but even the kitchen is not enough for everybody. What do we do? The he said, don't worry, I'll give out the kitchen. I'll just ration the kitchen so everybody gets something. And he was there giving out one spoonful of kitchen to everybody that came. And people were like thinking, we marched the whole day for one spoonful of kitchen. That's like, how is that going to sustain us? And Pandiji was still smiling and giving away one spoon of kitchen to everybody. And then um, eventually this um, South Indian lady came up to him and she didn't know any English, she didn't know any other language from North India. And she looked at the plate and she looked at Gandhiji and said, You're going to make me march on a whole plate of one spoon of kitchen like, for the whole day and it's going to work. So she, and she didn't know any way of communicating. So she looked at the kitchen, <coughs> she looked at Gandhiji and looked at the kitchen again and Gandhiji again. And Gandhiji smiled and said, This is all I have. 
He couldn't communicate to her because she didn't know the language. So he just smiled and said, This is all I have. And she said, Ramba Santosha. I'm satisfied. In life, if you are satisfied, sudden life becomes easy. Life is only difficult when you are dissatisfied with what you have. And when you don't count the blessings of the things you do have. So, Ramba Santosha, you must have that idea of Santosh, that idea of, I'm grateful for what I have. Attitude of gratitude in life, that you get on. And we know how great Gandhi you become, right? And how did he become so great? Yes. Because guess what his book is called? No. His no? My experiments with truth. My experiments with truth. In life, you must experiment with truth to see what results you can get. And you know what results can you got, right? Okay. So the truth has amazing results. Just have to try it out. So this Brahmin had a great success. He was very happy. His life was very good. And he said, right, I'm going to do this every month. Because if something's successful, what do you do? If something works, what do you do? You keep going. You do it again and again and again. Right? So he said, I'm going to do this every month. And he's doing this every month. And one day, a woodcutter came to his house. He was very thirsty and he said, okay, let me just go inside this house and ask for some water. He saw some puja was going on, so he started disturbing everybody. He decided to sit at the back, listen very carefully, and wait till the end so he could ask for water. So when the puja finished, he was very happy with the puja. He liked the puja. So he said to the Brahmin, what puja is this? He said, this is the puja of Satinaya. So he described the puja to him. And the brand and the and the woodcutter said, Oh, I think I'll do this as well. So he decided to follow Satya and he found amazing results in his life. You know, the wood he was cutting was sold for a really good price. Whatever money he got, he used for the puja and he was very, very happy with the results. In years to come, lots of people started to do this, and at one time, a merchant who happened to be traveling came to a kingdom. And he saw that the king was performing this puja. And he asked the king, why are you performing this puja? And the king said, well, I didn't have any children. And I did this puja and I had lots of children. And the, um, and the merchant said, oh, I don't have any children. Maybe I should do this puja. And maybe I can have some children as well. So he decided to do the puja. And uh, he said, if I get a child, I will do the puja. But the, the, the thing was, what was his thing? If I get a child, I will do the puja. So what was he doing? Nothing. He was challenging God and saying, no. if you do what I want to do, what you do, I will do the puja. And God said, well, listen, I don't mind the challenge. I can give you what you want. Can you give me what I want? Can you follow the truth? So God said, right, you get a child. He got a child. Did you think he did the puja? No. Why did you not do the puja? Because he got what he wanted and he didn't want to do anything else. Yeah, but what was his reason? What reason did he give everybody? He saw this. It's a... Matches. Matches. Yes. What do you think he said? I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I don't have time right now. And the child is young, and the child will disturb you while you're doing the puja. So he said to his wife, look, we'll do this puja when the child is a bit older, right? She won't disturb you so much. So the wife said, okay, fine. A few years later, when the child was older, the wife said, we'll do the puja, please. And what do you think he said? No. No, no. why did he say? So yeah, you know, God, is the busiest time of the year. We are really, you know, the project is going really strong. We don't have time. And, you know, we've got to do this when we have a little bit more time. So he said, not now. And then a few years later, his wife again reminded him, I think we should do the puja. He said, no, 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 the child is studying. Right now is the exam time. We, poss we cannot possibly do the puja right now. We'll do the puja when she gets married. That would be the ideal time because we'll have all our friends and family and we'll have everybody here. And guess what? That would be the perfect time to do the puja. She did get married. And guess what? The child, what was she? She was 
the gift of God, wasn't she? He asked, he asked God for a child, and he got a child. So the child was the gift of God. And as a result, this child was always going to have a beautiful life. So are you a gift of God? <laughs> yes, yes, you are. Yes. Indeed you are. I'm sure you're, your parents ask God, can we have children please? Right? So, yes. So, of course you're going to have a wonderful life. So this child had a wonderful life. And they found a beautiful, uh, they found a handsome husband for him. And guess what? He was going to live with them. So he didn't even take the child away. You know, their daughter stayed with them. So he had everything he wanted in his life. A beautiful daughter, a successful business, you know, a uh, obedient son-in-law. He had everything. But did you do the puja? No, no you didn't do the puja. What happens if in life you constantly don't keep your promise? No, what will happen? No, be, be, no, 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 we're not talking about fear, we're talking about actual things. A virgin living on your back. What will happen? No, <laughs> no, nobody will hang on your back. You don't get smacked. What happens? People stop believing you. Right? What happens if you don't keep your promise every single time? You will say, like, it's the point of saying, yeah, whatever he says doesn't mean anything. Like the Bible friend will. Like the boy who cried wolf. Okay? No, but I don't do that. Okay? In life, if you don't keep your promise, people will stop believing. People might just nod their heads and say, yeah, okay, okay. But they, don't, they know that in the heart of hearts, you're not going to keep your promise. If you keep selling substandard stuff in your shop, what will happen? Oh, people will stop, stop buying. People will stop buying you. Or people will say, this thing isn't worth as much as it says on the sticker, right? So if it says this, this thing is like you know the pure ghee. You know it's not pure ghee, so we won't pay the pure ghee price. If you constantly do something, people will get to know you for being that person. If you're constantly telling the truth, people will do what? People will know that if you say something, you will do it. You will do it. You will keep your promise. Okay? And people will expect you to keep your promise. And people will know that you keep your promise. Okay? If you are always late, what will happen? People will know that they have to give you half an hour before time, otherwise you'll always be late to that function. <laughs> people won't tell you that. They won't tell you to your face. But they'll, they'll just tell you, be there at 11.30 when they know they, they want you at 12 o'clock. Right? Because people will get to know you. Right? Whatever you do constantly and regularly becomes part of your life. So this person who was obviously inauthentic and a liar and a, you know, a person who generally didn't keep his word, he was doing it all the time. So he was doing that in his business as well, obviously. And at some point, what happens? People will say, stop believing you. Say, he cries wolf all the time. Let's not bother listening to him. So he went to trade in a foreign country. And he got caught out. And he got put in jail. It wasn't his fault. You know, somebody else did the stealing. Somebody else put all the goods in his warehouse. But he got caught with the goods. And therefore the king put him in jail. He lost all his wealth. And he got put in jail. So he couldn't even go back to his country anymore. And because he'd been inauthentic in his all his life, God decided to punish him by taking away all his wealth from his family. So his wife and daughter became very poor. And all the friends and family they had stopped visiting them, stopped helping them. And suddenly a happy family became a sad family. Now, if you look at it from one side, they became sad. If you look at it from the other side, this became sad because, because of their own karmas. Because they didn't do the things that they said they were going to do. And eventually that catches up with you. So they became sad and they became really unhappy and they became poor. But like parents, God is always kind. He always gives you a second chance. So God said, right, I've made them the way they are. I've given them everything they had. They lost everything because of their own karmas. Let me see if I show them the right path, if they'll follow the right path. Yeah? So God said, right, one day when the daughter was asking, begging for food, and she was going from house to house, she happened to come to a place where they were doing the puja for Satyanara. And the daughter sat there, she listened to the puja, and at the end of the puja, she took the, the prasad and she went 
she came back home. The mother said to the daughter, why are you late today? You know, you're normally back home much earlier than this. It's already gone past 7 o'clock at night. Why are you so late? She said, well, I was at a puja. It was at 6 o'clock. And I really liked the puja. And I really enjoyed the puja. And here's the prasad from the puja. And the mother said, what puja was that? She said, that was a puja of Satyanara. And the mother said, oh my God. When you were born, Mita, we, did, we promised God that we will do the puja of Satyanara. And guess what? We forgot. We have not kept our promise to God and we have not done the puja. Let's promise ourselves that tomorrow, with whatever we get, we will do the puja. It doesn't matter what we get. So the next day they went begging, with whatever they got, how little they got, they decided to do the puja of Satyanara. And God said, okay, you kept your part of the bargain. You started to become good. What happens when you start becoming good? You start achieving. You start achieving. And what do other people around you do? And what else do they do? They start helping you. Yeah. If you're doing something good, do people around you help you? Yeah. Yeah. They do. Genuinely help you. Right? That's exactly what started happening in their lives. They started becoming happier. And people started coming back. People started being helpful to them. And then, on the other side, God decided, right, to take some of this. It's the same thing. The, uh, the merchant who had obviously traded in a foreign country, who was in a jail, God went to the, um, to the king's dream and he said to the king, you have been unjust. A king should always be just. He should always be following justice. How can you lock somebody up without doing proper investigation? Did you find out whether this merchant was responsible for the theft or not? You haven't done an investigation. You put them in jail just because circumstantial evidence was that he could have stolen this good. So you better do justice to this young man, otherwise I will make you suffer. And obviously kings like to be just because they did like the idea that they are always good kings. So he immediately decided to get the investigation done and he said, right, we've obviously made a mistake. This person hadn't uh, stolen anything, we better give him all his things back and we better make reparations. They gave him extra stuff. And they said to the merchant, we are very sorry, but obviously we made a mistake. Here's everything. Go back to your kingdom. So the merchant said, right, I've got everything back. What should I do? He's a good job. I should scoot first. Get out of here. Before I get <laughs> He's a practical man, right? So he said, I, should be, I better get out of here first before I do anything. So he decided to go, and while they were waiting for the ships to sail, because ships need what? Yeah. Oil. 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 In, in, the, in the old days, before the oil. Uh, wind. They need tide to turn before they can go. <laughs> so, so, so he, while he was waiting for the tide to turn, he was thinking what to do, and his son-in-law said, why don't we do the puja? You know, we've obviously been promising ourselves to do this puja for a very long time. We've got some time. Let's do the puja. Yeah, yeah, let's do the puja very quickly yeah, before everybody gets here. Let's do the puja, then we don't have to feed so many people, and we don't have to worry about so many people. Let's just do the puja very quickly. Do the puja very, very quickly, and he just finished everything. And God said, This guy is obviously in a bit of a rush. Let's just check him out. See how truthful he's going to be. So God came as a, as a sadhu, as a, as a monk, and said, So, what are you trading in? You know, what sort of business are you in? And what do you think he said? Nothing. He said, I am only trading in leaves and things, plants. There's nothing of value on my ship. Nothing of value. Was that true? No. No, because he had got back all the wealth he had bought to the kingdom and the king had given him extra as a reparation, to, you know, as a compensation for, for losing all his money. So he had lots of things and he, right. he lied. And guess what happened? He took away all his wealth. Yeah. God said, the task, he said, so be it. If you think you've got nothing in life, guess what you will have? Nothing. Yeah. If you have everything in life and you still believe you have nothing, what will happen? So, you'll be miserable. Oh. Yeah. You could be living, you could be living in a palatial house with lots of helpful servants, with wonderful kids, 
a brilliant wife and you'd still be miserable. miserable because you believe you have nothing. nothing in life. You think my life is miserable and the world around you will be miserable. miserable. Just like if you think you're angry, the world around you is angry. If you think you're miserable, the world around you is miserable. Okay? You find something to complain about. You find the fog, you find the heat, you find the rain, you find even the bees buzzing in the garden to be complaining, right? Like, this is too much. Okay? So, if you are miserable, you are going to be miserable to everybody around you. Who got to the cake? You want to be miserable? I'll show you what miserable is. So, he took away all his wealth. And the moment he went on a ship, what did he see? He saw just plants. But what happened? All my money, all my wealth, all my, all my goods, all my silks and jewels, what happened to them? And the son-in-law said, maybe it's because you lied to, 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 to the monk. To the sadhu you lied and therefore maybe the sadhu has, and the sadhu did set the task to, so be it. So all your wealth has gone away. So I think you better go and see that sadhu. So he ran to the sadhu and said, sadhu, 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 please give me all my money back, please give me all my money back. I said, what money? You said you had? Nothing. You had nothing. You only had plants yeah. in your ship. So you have plants in your ship. So why are you saying, you know, no, 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 please, please, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I had all this money in my ship and now it's all gone. I said, what money? You had only plants. I said, no, no, no. I actually had silks and jewels and I had, oh, please, please, give me back my wealth. I said, I'll give everything back to you if you, if you promise not to lie and if you promise to follow truth. He said, you have been a dishonest person all your life and you have happiness only when you become honest, honest again. So he said, yes, 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 I'll become honest, I'll become honest. He said, no, when should you become honest? Now. now. Right now. So he said, what are you going to do? Not lie. And you're going to do another puja just to sort of prove the point. <laughs> so he made him do the puja. He said, right, now you can go back. And all his wealth was back. And he decided, right, let's get out of this country very quickly. I've already been in prison. I've lost all my wealth. I've regained it. Let's get out of here. This is always a bad country for me. He got straight out. And started going home. And just before he was getting home, he decided to send his wife and daughter a message to say, I'm coming home. And his wife and him were very happy. And what were they doing at the time? Doing a puja. Exactly, you got it. So they were doing puja. <laughs> and the mom said, right, I've, you know, we finished the puja. I've just cleared up a little bit. Why don't you clear up the rest and join me at the docks? So the mom decided to leave everything to the, to the daughter. And she went to the docks to receive her husband. And the daughter, you know, in a rush, she forgot to take the prasad. And God said, well, that's not very nice. What's Prasad? What's Prasad? Corn cakes. Food. Food. Yes, it is food. <laughs> They're right. <laughs> what, what is Prasad? More than food. What Yummy is Prasad? Food. <laughs> Yummy food. What else? Prayer. <laughs> it's the gift of God. Uh, okay. It's the sacrament. It's God's gift to you. You obviously given food to God, and God has returned it to you with His blessing. Okay. So the food that is offered to God is called prasad only after it has been offered to God, not before. Before that is still just food. But once it's offered to God, it becomes prasad, becomes prasad. God's gift, becomes God's blessing. Okay. So this is God's blessing. God is saying thank you very much for giving this and returning it to you. So like for example, if you brought a box of chocolate to Uncle Sudesh's house. What will Uncle Sudesh say? Thank you. And then what will he do? He would bless you. He wouldn't bless you. <laughs> what, 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 what does he do? Be honest. Come on, be honest. What does he do? He thanks you. And then what does he do? He gives you. He opens the box, has one, and he gives to you. He says, let's share. Does he not share with you? Yeah? Yeah. He shares it with you, right? So when we offer. <laughs> So when we, when we offer food to God, God takes the essence of the food and he gives it back. And this is, this is his way of saying, thank you for sharing your food. I'm going to share what you've given. Yeah, exactly. And if you don't 
and if if you offered Uncle Sudesh chocolate, he had a chocolate, he gave you the chocolate, and if you said no thank you, and you went to run away to play with your cousins, what will he say? That's um, not nice. That's not nice. <laughs> right? So God said, well, that's not nice. I've given them everything you wanted, and she's saying no to my prasad. <laughs> so God said, okay, your husband is hidden from you. And he fall. said, oh my God, my husband, my ship is drowned, my ship is gone. Ah, she started crying. I said, no, no, there's nothing that's gone wrong. You just go back and say thank you to God. Attitude of gratitude. Attitude of gratitude. Once you have attitude of gratitude, life becomes simple. And he said, right. Have the attitude of gratitude and everything will become crystal clear again. And my husband, ah, there he is. So he hasn't gone anywhere. He just, she just couldn't see him. Right? A lot of times in life, we just can't see things as they are because we are lying to them. Because we are hiding from the truth rather than the truth hiding from us. We are the ones who are hiding from truth. Okay? So the moment that happened, everything became clear and she was like, ah. So glad it was good. And then they did what? A puja. A puja to say thank you. Well done. <laughs> Give that girl a prasad. <laughs> and then, at the end of the whole thing, they became very happy. And then there are stories of other people who didn't do the puja properly or they ignored the puja that was being offered. There was a king thought he was too important. He didn't bother going to the puja. And he even ignored the prasad that was given to him. As a result, he lost everything. And then he went back and did the puja. puja. Everything came back to him, right? So in life, you need to appreciate the things that God has given you. Okay? And God has given us a lot of things. We need to appreciate that. We need to have the attitude of gratitude. And we have to be truthful. Truthful. We have to be honest in our lives. Okay? The moment you become honest in your life, life becomes simple. The moment you lie, what happens? Badness, miserable. No. Badness. Okay. What happens? <laughs> you're flying into further. Right. Life becomes complicated because you have to remember what lie did you give to who? Because otherwise, it's that person would tell somebody else, and then you still have to cover up, and then you cover up some with somebody else. And if that person happens to tell, oh my god, okay, okay, okay. No, actually, I was on A one hundred one, and that's why I couldn't. Wait. Oh no, it was two hundred eight, two hundred eight. It's like I can't remember now what I said to who. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I had to lie again and again and again to cover up my previous lies. And therefore life becomes very, very complicated. Okay? If you, if you, if you tell the teacher, dog ate my homework, okay? And then the next time your, 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 your parents go to the parents' evening and say, oh, how are your pets? You don't have pets. <laughs> uh, what happened to that dog that ate your homework? <laughs> right? Okay? So in life, the moment you lie, you have to cover up your lies so many times, and then at some point, somebody will expose your lies by accident anyway. Okay? And then at that time, what will happen? What will the teacher say? Yeah. This kid is unreliable. <laughs> yeah. okay? I obviously can't believe what this kid says. So in life, the moment you lie, you have to then complicate your life. The moment you say the truth, simple. life becomes simple. And simple is better than complicated, right? So in life, always remember, you should not lie. Because lie does not get you where you want to go to. That's what the whole story is about. You like that story? That's it. That's my job done then. <laughs> now you get to start practicing. <laughs> I like cheese. <laughs> okay. All right. So, it's the truth. She likes so, so that's, the, that's the truth. So now, now, now the puja is complete. The katha is complete. We, we now do the bhajan. We, we offer food to God. We do arti for God, and um, and then we say thank you and we have prasad. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> right. Uh, does anybody know any bhajans or anything? Dance. They don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they do. Nani knows any bhajan? Nadi knows any bhajan? Okay. That's the aarti. You can have that as the aarti. Yeah? You can have that as the aarti. Sorry? I said you say the bhajan. I can say lots of bhajans. Okay. Which bhajan shall we say? Okay. Um, there are a couple of bhajans that we can do. 
um, we, we can we can uh, we can do a bhajan in uh, Hindi, or we can do a bhajan in uh, in a stotra in Sanskrit. Um, let, let, let's do a stotra in uh, in uh, Sanskrit, and we'll do a uh, bhajan in um, in Hindi. Yeah, this stotra was written by Shankaracharya. I don't know if you know Shankaracharya. He was a fantastic, phenomenally intelligent man. He was very, very clever. And he lived in about 7th century AD. So, yeah, so very, very long time. And this is what he has to say about Atma. What is Atma? The soul. The soul. Yeah? This is what he has to say about the soul. Because somebody once asked him, Who are you? And he said, said, Well, that's a very good question. Who are you? What am I? I said, Right. Am I the body? Am I the food? Am I the um, am I the things I eat, drink? Am I my actions? Am I my community? Am I the titles people give me? Who am I? Okay. We can put that in there if you want, because there's a view already ready. Okay. okay. So and he he asked himself, "Who am I?" And from that, he created a very short uh, stotra, a very short um, hymn of only six verses. And these six verses go through all the first. And, and, and like a scientist, he just said, "Right, logically, this is I am, I am, I am. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not." So first things, first five verses are what I'm not, and the sixth verse is what I am. And here the word satya is quite important because it says satya is that which does not change. Simple. Truth, does it change? No. no. Truth is constant. Is, am I five years old? No. no. Why? It's a truth. For a very short time. In a year's time I'll be six. So now I'll be seven, then I'll be eight. Therefore my age is not steady, it's not constant. Therefore it cannot be the truth. Am I a tablet? No, because to my brother, I might be somebody else. To my wife, I might, I might call me back somebody else. My children will call me daddy. Therefore, I can't be my name. Am I a project manager? Not really, because tomorrow my job could change and I could be the CIO, I could be CTO, I could be anybody else. So, I'm not my job. I'm not my function in life. I'm not my body. I, who am I? Oh. Who are you? You're a human. Are you human? No. Well, somebody <laughs> might call you a primate. <laughs> somebody might call you human, and somebody might call you a child, somebody might call you, you are human only for a short time, and then you'll be a soul. A soul he said, what am I? And he goes through all this, what I am not, as a first to negate and say, this, I, this is definitely not what I am. And then he says, okay, this is what I am. So in the last verse, he says who I am. And we'll do the whole thing, and I'll just explain the last verse mm -hmm. at the end. Okay? Mano buddhi hankar chitta dinam na cha shotra jihve na cha dhana nitri na cha vyoma bhoomi na tejo na vayu chidananda rupa shivoham shivoham chidananda rupa Shivoham, Shivoham, Nacha Prana Sangyo, Nevei Pancha Vayu, Neva Sapta Tatu, Neva Pancha Kosha, Neva Pani Pado, Nacho Pasta Payu, Chidananda Rupa, Shivoham, Shivoham, Chitananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham Name Tve Sharago Name Dopa Moho Madonaiva Me Naiva Matsarya Bhava Na Dharmo Na Chato Na Kamo Na Moksha Chidananda Rupa 
शिवोहम शिवोहम चिदानंद रूप शिवोहम शिवोहम न पुण्यम न पापम न सौख्यम न दुखम न मंत्रो न तीर्थो न वेदान यज्ञ अहम भोजनम नैव भोज्यम न भोक्ता चिदानंद रूप शिवोहम शिवोहम चिदानंद रूप शिवोहम शिवोहम न मे मृत्यु शंका न मे जाति भेद पिता नैव मे नैव माता न जन्म न बंधु न मित्र गुरु नैव शिष्य चिदानंद रूप शिवोहम शिवोहम चिदानंद रूप शिवोहम शिवोहम अहम निर्विकल्पो निराकार रूपो विभुर्व्याप्य सर्वत्र सर्वेन्द्रिया सदा मे समत्व न मुक्ति न बंध चिदानंद रूप शिवोहम शिवोहम चिदानंद रूप शिवोहम शिवोहम विशेष अहम निर्विकल्पो निराकार रूप विभुर व्याप्य सर्वत्र सर्वेन्द्रिया सदा मे समत्व न मुक्ति न बंध चिदानंद रूप शिवोहम शिवोहम so basically i am who am i i am the soul i have no particular form i am just the soul i am everywhere even in this body even in this body can you say where the soul is no you can't say it's in the heart or the head or the wherever it might be it's everywhere and if the soul wasn't working around the whole body my body wouldn't be functioning so i am everywhere सदा सर्वत्र सर्वेन्द्रियाणम इन माई एवरी इंद्रिय सोल इज दैट सदा मे समत्व न मुक्ति एंड द सोल इज इक्वल टू इट देर इज नो गुड और बैड न मुक्ति बंध आई हैव नो बॉन्ड दैट बाइंड देर नो बॉन्ड दैट बाइंड द सोल सोल कैन गो एनी टाइम इट वॉन्ट चिदानंद रूप शिवो हम शिवो हम आई एम प्योर आनंद चिदानंद रूप आनंद सोल इज जॉय ब्लेस एंड इफ योर एट ब्लेस वॉट हैपन्स वुड इज अबाउट वर्किंग मेर एवरीथिंग इज ब्लेस फॉर राइट दर्सन इज हैप्पी एवरीथिंग इन द वर्ल्ड इज हैप्पी सो इन लाइफ यू शुड बी चिदानंद रूप शिवो हम शिवो है we'll do one bhajan um which basically describes the form of vishnu bhagwan um because how many hands does vishnu bhagwan have okay how many hands does he have have a look in the uh, in the picture four six he has four hands <laughs> <laughs> he has four hands okay and can anybody make out what's in his four hands Flowers, a flower, a conch, a disc, a discus, yeah. and the yeah, that's the conch, and uh, a mace, <laughs> a mace. Yeah, so he has a flower, so which is a lotus. So he has a he, he has a lotus, he has a conch, he has a discus, and he has a mace. to basically cover all the various things that he needs to do because he is the protector and supporter of the universe so this bhajan basically talks about the four things that he has in his hands and why he has the four things so why do you think he has the lotus purity 
You know, it's nothing. To bless somebody. To bless? But what, what else? Wiseness. Mm, not so much. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> no. The lotus is there to tell us this is life as it is. Okay? Where does a lotus grow from? A muddy pool. Yeah? Lotus doesn't grow in a clear pool. It always grows in a muddy pool. His life is a mess. It's a mud, right? What you create out of it is up to you. You create beauty and you will get beauty. So Lotus says, look, I've grown up from mud, but I'm happy. I smile. It doesn't matter what's around me. If I smile, the world smiles with me. Does anybody look at the mud when they look at the lotus? No. No, they look at the lotus. They say, oh, isn't it beautiful? Does anybody see the mud underneath? In your life, if you're smiling, people will often forget all the things that are around you. So in life, you should be like that, the lotus. Okay? So, Padma Dharyo Janata Panivaram. So people are miserable and God says, why are you miserable? Look at this lotus. It's happy. You might be miserable, but create greatness and happiness from within your life. Padma Dharyo Janata Panivaram. Chakra Sudarshana Dharyo Kamalakar. Bhaktana Ki Rakshake Kahan. He has to discuss in his hand to protect his devotees. It's not that to kill anything. Okay? Because the name of the chakra is Sudarshan. That which has good darshan. What does darshan mean? Yeah, Blessing or darshan means to see. Yeah? To see. So when we go for darshan, we are going to see God. Okay? So darshan and su means good. So what should you do in life? Good. Look for the good. Well done. If you look for the good, Okay, and if you have the attitude that somebody is always doing something for positivity, you will see goodness around you. So Sudarshan doesn't kill anybody. The idea is to look for the good in everything. Chakra Sudarshan Dharyo Kamalakara Bhaktanaki Rakshaki Tara. Shankha Dharyo Ripu Udara Vidara. The conch is there to give us wisdom. And what happens once you have wisdom? Conquer the world. <laughs> you conquer the world because that's what it does. Ripu, with the, he, he kills all his enemies. What else does knowledge do? Truth sets you free. Sets you free. You're no longer miserable. Shankha Dharyo Ripu Udar Bidaran Gada Dhari Dushna Samhara. Gada is there to get rid of the evil people because you have to have strength. Right? You can't always be nice, nice, nice. So unless you have strength, what will happen? People will walk all over you. Right? You have to be able to say no sometimes. Okay? Otherwise you get too many projects given to you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to have the strength of character. You have to have the strength of whatever you need to be able to say, This is what I can manage. This is my life. So he said, This is this is what I do. So Sorry, These are the things that I see in Vishnu. This is how he takes care of the whole universe. By being strong, by being gentle, by being kind, and by giving wisdom. Okay? So that's what we need in our life. That's what the bhajan is about. Padmadharyo janata panivarana Padmadharyo janata panivarana Padmadharyo janata panivarana Padmadharyo janata panivarana Chakra Sudarshan Dharyo Kamalakara Chakra Sudarshan Dharyo Kamalakara Bhaktana Kira Shake Karana Bhaktana Kira Shake Karana Shankadaryo Ripura Rabidarana Shankadaryo Ripura Rabidarana Gadadari Dushtana Sauharana Gadadari Dushtana Sauharana 
चार भुजा प्रभु चार आयु